the U.S. men's national team has qualified for the 2022 World Cup. We've had about six weeks for that to set in, and now we are six months away from the drop of the roster. A lot has happened in the weeks since, some injuries, some player news, and there is a roster just about two weeks away now. So today we're going to project the World Cup roster for November, as well as the June International Window roster. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, like the video. But yeah, we are going to start with the World Cup roster for Qatar. A couple things. It's going to be a 26-man roster. All indications are suggesting that it will be. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to operate under that assumption and go for a 26-man roster. As always, we will start with the goalkeepers. Of course, there will be three. And the first two really do pick themselves between Matt Turner, soon to be of Arsenal, and Zach Steff in the back of at Man City. Those two are going to be there if they're healthy, pretty much no matter what. They're the top two goalkeepers. It's a question over who's going to start. But those two are the top two goalkeepers for the U.S. men's national team right now, and no one is really questioning that. The, the debate is going to be over the third goalkeeper. I think right now it would be Sean Johnson because Ethan Horvath is not playing. Ethan Horvath is ahead of Sean Johnson in the depth chart for Greg Berhalter. And this has been shown by in the March qualifiers, Ethan Horvath was the one on the bench, not Sean Johnson. The other options being Brad Guzan, who's out for the season, he's out for the World Cup, and Gaga Slonina, who, I mean, he still has a long, long way to go. And it's not crazy to think that he could be brought as the third goalkeeper because the third goalie won't play and he would be there for experience. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to be Ethan Horvath because I think he's going to be playing in the fall, whether it's at Nottingham Forest, whether it's somewhere else, I think he will be getting on the field somewhere. On to the center backs. And I'm also going to have to operate under the assumption that Miles Robinson will not be there. Yesterday, as of recording, he did pick up what appeared to be a major Achilles, potentially, injury, which would, if true, keep him out for the season. Now, fingers crossed, it's not that bad. We don't really have any updates since he went down hurt, so fingers crossed he is going to be available for the World Cup, but I'm going to operate under the assumption that he's not. I think whether or not Miles Robinson was available, Chris Richards, Walker Zimmerman, and Aaron Long were going to be there. Richards and Zimmerman are my preferred starting pairing at the moment. And Walker Zimmerman, just the way that he stepped up in World Cup qualifying throughout the cycle progressively as, as the octagonal went on, he just improved, got better, stepped up as a leader, ended up capturing the last game. Chris Richards is the best American center back right now. So I think there's no doubt he should be starting. I wouldn't be shocked if Aaron Long is also in the conversation to start. He was out for a year with an Achilles injury, came back from injury, and went straight back into the national team fold, got a couple minutes at the Azteca, came off the bench as well against Panama. There is no doubt for me that he will be in the U.S. Men's and National Team World Cup squad if he is healthy. Eric Palmer Brown is the next one up for me, and I think for Greg Berhalter too, he's definitely very high up on his list. He did play at the Azteca as a right back, but that was off the bench due to injuries. He is really a center back and someone who can play that position very, very well, as he's shown throughout the year playing for Trois in Ligue 1. And I think right now, he's the next man up on the depth chart. A couple other options that should be discussed. John Brooks. A couple of weeks ago, it sounded like he was going to return to the U.S. Men's National Team in the June roster. Now, it's starting to sound like he might not be. So we'll just have to wait and see with John Brooks. But it right now does not sound like he's going to be coming back to the U.S. men's national team. Which is unfortunate because, you know, he had some really good moments uh, for the U.S. men's national team over the last couple of years. But it just doesn't sound like he's going to be there. Um, it's, uh, it's, we are lucky that we do have plenty of good center back options, though. So I'm not too worried. Cameron Carter-Vickers is another option. He will have a shot. 
potentially in June, to earn a spot on the roster. We'll just have to wait and see what happens with him, though personally, I don't rate him as highly as some people do. The three other names that I guess just deserve a mention are Tim Ream, who had a phenomenal year for Fulham but hasn't been called into any U.S. rosters, so I doubt he will be there. Mark McKenzie, who is probably still firmly in the conversation, but I also don't think is at the level required uh, ahead of some of the other guys. And then the last one is James Sands, who, I mean, he's going to be playing in a Europa League final for Rangers, but I just don't think that he's better than any of the other options that we have. The one positive that James Sands does bring, and there's a case for him to be the last center back on the roster, especially if we're only bringing four, is that he can also play the six and be a backup for uh, Tyler Adams and Kellen Acosta in that position as well. On to the fullbacks, and this is where I went bold. I went very, very bold here. Serginio Dest and Anthony Robinson are absolutely locks, right back and left back starters. This is where things get a little bit fuzzy, because over the last year or so, apparently it's been seeming like DeAndre Yedlin and Reggie Cannon have been the two next up in the fullback position. But I just think that some of the younger options will earn spots. So we'll start with DeAndre Yedlin. I think he'll beat out Reggie Cannon for the backup right back spot. Now, Joe Scali and Kevin Paredes are both pretty bold picks for me. Neither of them played a single minute in qualifying. Kevin Paredes didn't get a single call up. Joe Scali did get one but didn't play. There have been reports and rumors that he will be in the June camp. I'm going to assume that he is, and I think he will earn a spot on the team. He can play right back and left back, will be incredibly useful. So for me, Joe Scali sneaks into the World Cup squad. This may be wishful thinking, though. Now, Kevin Paredes. This one I'm going to have to explain myself. He's yet to debut for the men's national team. Um, he was He's only been in two camps. One was the pre-Gold Cup camp, where he was on, on the standby list, basically. And the other one was the December camp where he ended up getting injured and had to go home early. So he recently made his first two appearances for the senior team of Wolfsburg coming in as a left back. I just think that Kevin Paredes is going to be the backup left back for the U.S. men's national team in Qatar. He might be coming into that World Cup with only one or two caps and definitely will not play. But I just think that he is the guy who is going to be the surprise player who breaks in to the national team. He is one of our most talented prospects, arguably the best 2003 prospect, and right up there with Jonathan Gomez as the best left back prospect. He's been getting minutes for Wolfsburg, and I think he will get more minutes in the fall next season. George Bello is the other really big option at left back. He's He's going to get relegated. Unless something crazy happens in the last couple days of the season, Armenia Bielefeld are going to be in the Zweite Bundesliga, the second division. Kevin Paredes will be playing up a level, and I think Kevin Paredes already isn't that far off of George Bello. George Bello hasn't improved that much over the last couple of years. So, for that reason, this is my long shot crazy prediction is that Kevin Paredes will go to the World Cup with the U.S. men's national team. Under the midfielders, typically I divide it into defensive and attacking midfielders, but I think they've come a little bit more fluid, so I'll, I'll, get, I'll explain. I think Kellen Acosta and Tyler Adams as the two sixes are locks, and there's really nobody who can touch them, can even compete to get there. As for the midfielders, there are a couple omissions here, and a couple players we'll have to come back to later in the video. So Weston McKenney and Yunus Musa are locks. They're the two starters. I think they're locked in as starters. Luca De La Torre, after his performances in the Honduras game in January and the Panama game in March, I think he has earned his spot right now as third in the depth chart for that position as the eight. And then fourth, I think, is going to be Christian Roldan. This would not be my pick. I'm just going to make that clear. I just think that he's going to be there. I think that he's been a part of every single U.S. men's national team roster 
since the beginning of 2019, other than one. That he was available for, should I say. Every camp that he's been available for since Greg Berhalter became the head coach of the U.S. Men's National Team, Christian Roldan has been there except for one camp, the Nations League camp in 2021. Every other camp that he's been available and fit for, he's been there. I would be shocked if he wasn't on the World Cup roster, even though I don't think he's ever really shown enough for the U.S. Men's National Team to be worthy of uh, a roster spot this consistently and especially not a World Cup roster spot. There are a couple guys that I think maybe deserve looks over him. Maybe a couple guys who are going to be featured in other positions in this video. However, he probably won't play in the World Cup even if he's on the roster, so it is what it is. I think my role is a uh, is a little di a little different bringing that vibe on to the wingers now. Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah, and Brendan Aronson are all 100% locks as wingers. Gio Reyna is a lock for the roster as well, no doubt. We're going to come back to him in a second. I think Paul Areola will probably be there. He was good enough in his qualifying minutes that he's probably going to be there unless he gets injured or drops off a cliff. And then Georgi Mihailovic is another one of my maybe, maybe wishful thinking predictions. Maybe it's a bit too hopeful, but... I don't see a way that his performances do not merit a World Cup roster spot if he keeps up the way he's been playing for the last year and a half now. So what did I say about Gio Reyna and Georgi Mihailovic for that matter? Both of them have played inside for their clubs quite a bit. They've played as 8s or 10s. But Greg Berhalter sees them both as wingers and I don't think we will see them centrally for the US Men's National Team anytime soon. Gio Reyna especially I think will be on the wing. Georgi Mihailovic has really tough competition to break into the winger positions, he would have to beat out Jordan Morris, which is tough to do because he's been in, again, I think every camp that he's been available for since Greg Berhalter took over. But I just think that Georgi Mihailovic has been so good since the beginning of 2021. Throughout the entire season, he had the most assists in Major League Soccer last season, and this season he has like five goals and four assists or something already. I think he's the he has the most goals and assists of any player in MLS so far this year. It would be shocking at this point if he isn't getting call-ups. That being said, I don't think that Berhalter is the biggest fan because even though he was really good in January training camp, he didn't make that January World Cup qualifying roster, nor did he make the March World Cup qualifying roster. With that being said, he is still firmly perceived as being in the national team pool. So there's definitely a shot. It's definitely not impossible. I'm very hopeful he will be there. I just think he's been better than Jordan Morris and for that matter, Paul Areola over the last year and a half in MLS and thus warrants a roster spot for the US men's national team. The center forward is a very wide open position. Right now, Jesus Ferreira and Ricardo Pepe are no doubt the top two guys. Um, Jesus Ferreira is the starting striker for me right now. He's been the one who's been scoring goals in MLS and has looked pretty good in his recent games for the men's national team. Ricardo Pepe has been really dry lately. He hasn't scored a goal since October in that Jamaica game. He hasn't scored for Augsburg. He's not going to be in this June window, apparently, because of a mental break, which is fair. He's been playing nonstop soccer for 18 months now. But I think these two are going to be the strikers. But this is wide open. Number one, Malik Tillman. We'll come back to him when we talk a little bit about the June roster, but there have been a lot of rumors that Greg Berhalter is trying to bring him in to the program that he could potentially be someone who could switch to represent the United States. Greg Berhalter was recently in Germany and did recently meet with Malik Tillman. So he is perceived as a possible nine solution for this camp. You never know, you never know. He could break into the World Cup roster, but I don't think he'd beat out either of these two guys at the moment, unless he starts scoring goals in the Bundesliga. Josh Sargent has been playing mostly as a winger and has been pretty bad and has been injured, so I don't think he'll break back in soon unless he goes crazy in the fall. Jossi Zardes, I think, should be done for the national team. He looked very, very, very bad in every single qualifier he played in. I don't think he'll be back with the national team. He's just over the hill, I think. Jordan Peefock, 
I just don't think he's very good either. He's had his chances. He has not taken them. He just hasn't been very good. And the last one to mention is Hadju Wright. He's intriguing. He's been in some really, really good form lately. You never know because he apparently could be in June camp. He's the guy in form right now. But is that a hot streak? Is he just the flavor of the month? Or is he a serious option for the U.S. national team at the striker position for the World Cup? That we will just have to wait and see. That is my predicted roster for the Qatar World Cup. Now we are going to talk a little bit about this upcoming June camp very briefly, just a couple of minutes, and what I think is going to happen with that roster. So the first thing that I want to address is that I think that this roster is going to be a practice run for the World Cup roster, if that makes any sense. There is a report from Doug McIntyre of Fox Sports that it's going to be a 27-man roster. When I threw my prediction, I actually had 28, and you'll see why. But what I think is going to happen is, obviously, a couple people are injured right now. A couple people are not going to be in this camp for different reasons. I think he's pretty much going to call up what he thinks his World Cup roster is at the moment, minus a couple of those changes that I mentioned that are going to be coming in and out. So let me... Again, start with the goalkeepers right here. All right, so for the goalkeepers, I went for the same as the World Cup roster. The only change I put is Sean Johnson, just because, like I mentioned when I talked about the goalkeepers, I think that if Ethan Horvath isn't playing, then Sean Johnson comes in. But if Horvath is playing, which I think he will be in the fall, Horvath comes in. But I think for this roster, it will be Sean Johnson. Though, kind of in the back of my mind, because Poland is courting him so closely, I wonder if we could see Gaga Slonina for this camp. Maybe, because he's probably not going to be released for the U20 tournament. But we'll just have to wait and see. For the center backs, I went for a 5. Um, so I did actually add 1 um, to the World Cup roster. And that's Cameron Carter-Vickers, who Greg Berhalter has insinuated could be there. Um, and likely will be there. Again, I personally wouldn't do this. I would take a look at maybe John, bringing John Brooks back in. Or something like that I, I think he probably does sound like he will be there so I'll go for Cameron Carter Vickers so for the fullbacks I'm pretty much going with what I said at the beginning of this section where I said I think it'll be the World Cup roster but with the injury replacement in so I think it'll be Reggie Cannon for Serginio Dest and this camp will basically be Reggie Cannon and DeAndre Edlin fighting it out for who's gonna be the backup right back and Joe Scali sounds like he's going to be there. And I think, like I said, I think Kevin Paredes is going to be the surprise in this camp. And he's going to do well enough in camp in front of Greg Berhalter to earn another call in the fall. And maybe be on the plane to Qatar. But that, again, it's, it's kind of a long shot prediction. It's just kind of a gut feeling because I really like Kevin Paredes. And I think he's the future of the left back position along with Jonathan Gomez. Who, again, it would be nice to see Jonathan Gomez here. I just don't think it's going to happen. For the midfielders, I'm going with the same six that I did for the World Cup roster because right now all these guys are available. Now Weston McKennie is coming back from injury. If he's not available, it would probably be Gianluca Buzio instead. I didn't address Buzio when I talked about the World Cup roster, but the fact that he only played like 10 minutes in all of March camp and has barely played when he's been in camp just makes me think that combined with Venezia getting relegated, I don't think he's going to be in the World Cup roster. This is my six for June that I think will be called in. Feel free to disagree. Let me know what you think. Could a guy like Alex Mendes sneak in? I doubt it, but you never know. For the wingers, I did put six. Um, Gio Reyna is not going to be there for fitness reasons. So I think Georgi Mihailovic will come into this camp as the Gio Reyna injury replacement. And he will outperform Jordan Morris to earn his spot for later in the year. So this is why you have to watch the whole video. Because this explains my Mihalovic over Morris World Cup roster pick. I think that Mihalovic will come into this camp for Gio Reyna and earn the spot from Jordan Morris. And last but not least, the number nines. Jesus Ferreira will be there because he's the number one striker right now. Pepe will not be there because he's taking a mental break. So the guy who comes in for Pepe is going to be Hadju Wright, who's in good form right now. And then I think that that last 28th invitation that I alluded to at the beginning, Malik Tillman. 
Now this is only if he accepts the call up and switches. I don't think he's actually going to be in camp unless he decides to actually switch. I don't think he'll just be here to train. But he's viewed as a possible 9 option for the World Cup. So I am going to put Malik Tillman in this roster as the last guy to potentially make a shock run for the number 9 position in Qatar for the US Men's National Team. What do you think? Of Malik Tillman. So that's my roster, both for the World Cup in six months and for the June friendlies against Morocco and Uruguay and Nations League games against Granada and El Salvador. Let me know what you think of those rosters. Who would you like to see that I didn't even mention? Is there a player out there that you want to see that? I didn't. Th I don't think the Burhalter is going to call up. I didn't say that I think has a long shot chance. Is there anybody out there? Because I'm sure there are guys. Let me know what you think. I will see you guys in the next video, whenever that may be. Adios.